Hey everybody, it's Travis here with the NPCs, and it's time for another quick save. For October 5th, 2021, here is what you need to know. In our very Nintendo heavy quick save today, First thing up on our list, of course, is the announcement of our final fighter for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. During a Super Smash Bros. Direct today hosted by Sakurai himself, we got our look at our final fighter, Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Sora by far was one of the biggest surprises to come out of this given a bunch of leaks and rumors talking about the potential for Master Chief, Doom Guy, or even Waluigi making their appearance in the fighter game. Per Sakurai, during today's live stream, it turns out that Sora was actually picked based on a survey that was run during the original release of the 3DS and Wii U Super Smash Bros. game several years ago. We not only got to see Sora in all the different costumes and all the different forms that he could take, but we also got to see his fighting abilities and, of course, his ultimate smash. The character, of course, comes with multiple music tracks that go along with the Kingdom Hearts franchise and, of course, a Hollow Bastion-themed level. On top of the announcements that we also got out of this, Sakurai announced that we also have several new amiibos on the way too, including an Alex and Steve from Minecraft amiibo, as well as several others including Sephiroth on their way here very soon. Counting up all of the different fighters we have in this game, including some of their separate skins, we are currently up to 89 fighters in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game. We should be seeing Sora, all of the skins, the music, and of course Hollow Bastion, hitting Super Smash Bros. Ultimate October 18th. However, with the announcement, it wasn't only Sora that was coming to Super Smash Bros., it was actually some other things coming to the Switch as well. In celebration of Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary, we are now seeing the Kingdom Hearts games make their way to Switch for the very first time. The games are going to be available via Nintendo Switch's cloud functionality, meaning that the games themselves won't be on the Switch, but you'll be able to play them on the go as long as you have an internet connection. There is no present release date right now for the Kingdom Hearts series coming to Switch just yet, but we expect the release date to be revealed very soon. Next up in the news today, we've got a potential look at what could be 4K coming to the Switch here, or at least future-proofing for it. YouTuber Nintendo Prime was able to get a hold of a Nintendo Switch OLED Edition console and its dock early before its release here later this week. He was able to perform a teardown of the new dock and was able to discover not only that the dock itself and the whole package come with an HDMI 2.0 cable, but the inside components also show that the HDMI port is capable of HDMI 2.0 and 4K output. Based on the information revealed so far, it looks like the 4K output is going to be dependent specifically on having a Nintendo Switch that is capable of processing the 4K output given the fact that the dock itself is only allowing for the upscaling to originally take place by engaging it on the Switch itself and then pushing it out to a television. As we talked about last week, there are rumors going around right now that multiple game studios are currently in possession of a Switch 4K development kit. As reported on by Bloomberg last week, several of those companies themselves say they've been developing since July of this year. However, Nintendo has said that they are not delivering any sort of 4K development kits at this time, nor do they have any plans to release anything 4K for the Switch here very soon. However, of course, we don't put it past Nintendo to future-proof any of their devices right now, given their history of future-proofing devices, such as the underside expansion slots on the bottom of the GameCube, and of course, going even back to things like the Nintendo 64 with the expansion pack slot. As we work our way through the rest of the year into next year, it wouldn't be a surprise to actually see a Switch Pro or Switch 4K edition make its way to store shelves sometime soon. However, with the release of the OLED model coming up here in the next few days, we may still be a year or so out. Last up on the news, we have word that Metroid Prime 3 Corruption could have been an open world game for the Wii. As reported on by Video Games Chronicle in a lengthy interview with Kiwi Talks, former director of development over at Retro Studios Brian Walker revealed that former series director Mark Piscini was in talks with Nintendo to work on an open world version of Metroid Prime 3 for the Wii. In the interview, Brian states, quote, Mark came forward with an interesting twist in the vision and some of the formulas for Metroid Prime 3 compared to Metroid Prime 2. We wanted to a great degree leverage the ship as a playable asset, and we had that to some degree in Prime 3, 
but Mark was thinking about it much more ambitiously. One of the more interesting things from the interview is exactly how Pacini decided to take this on and actually figure out what was the best way to approach this, given that he wanted to focus on using Samus's ship as the main transport to get around to different areas in the game itself. Quote, in fact, Mark printed out as one of his visual aids the original Samus ship. He had taken the mesh of the Samus ship and used a program that basically unfolded it into what he could then turn into a paper model. So we had this cardboard Samus ship that he had colored in, and it looked great. I think we could sell it today. However, farther along in the interview, Brian reveals, unfortunately, that the Wii itself was not powerful enough to handle this ambitious goal with Metroid Prime 3. So unfortunately, this was scrapped. What does this mean for the Metroid Prime universe going forward? Who knows? All we've had so far is an announcement of Metroid Prime 4, and that doesn't even have a release date itself. However, Metroid Dread is coming up here in the next couple days too. The hope at least with Metroid Prime 4 is that maybe with the raw power of the Nintendo Switch or potentially using the cloud functionality, maybe we could see something like this come to life. And that is it for today's quick save. Of course, just like quick saving in a game, you need to make sure to hit that button in the game itself. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that way you know when all of our videos and live streams go live on our channel. Of course, with that, don't forget to hit our social media up on Facebook and Twitter at the NBC's podcast as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you all in the next one.